welcome to Taja's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you four side dishes using tofu. So most of the Japanese cooking are not vegetarian or vegan, but tofu is one of those ingredients that is strictly vegan. Many people nowadays know about tofu, but many of the tofu you may see outside Japan, like this in a package, are not really tofu. And many people think tofu is really bland, has no taste to it, but really actually good tofu, really quality tofu, are really flavorful. You can really taste the juiciness of the soybeans. You may think with tofu there's a very limited recipe for it, and you may think tofu is just a substitute for meat. But there are actually quite a lot of recipes using tofu, not as a substitute for meat, but to enjoy tofu as it is. There's even a recipe book which is called Tofu Hyakuchin, meaning 100 recipes of tofu, which was published in the Edo era over 200 years ago. So today I'll be showing four side dishes that is quite common in Japan. One is hiyayako, which is just kind of tofu with some condiments, but it's the best way to really enjoy the flavor of tofu. And second is called for shirae, which is kind of like a Japanese salad. And the third is tofu chankuru. This is actually more of a southern recipe from Okinawa region, but nowadays people make it quite often. We usually make this with pork meat, but I made a variation strictly vegetarian. And the fourth is agedashi tofu, which is my favorite izakaya food. So when I go to izakaya, I almost always order this as a starter. Especially for those vegetarian and vegans out there, I hope this video gives you some new ideas for Japanese cooking. Then, let's get started. Here are the ingredients for four types of side dishes using tofu. So today I have two types of tofu, I have silk tofu and pressed tofu. The difference I'm going to explain to you later, but you can make any of the four side dishes using either of the tofu. It's primarily a personal preference thing. For hiyayako I have a piece of ginger, scallion. For shirai I have spinach, carrot, and shimeji mushroom. Whatever type of mushroom you have is fine. And for the sauce, soy sauce, sugar, and also I have tahini. If you don't have tahini, you can also just use the regular sesame seed as well. And then for agedashi tofu, I have starch, and for the sauce or the tsuyu, I have dashi powder, sugar, and soy sauce. And lastly, for the tofu champuru, I'm gonna use the other half of the carrot, bean sprouts, an egg, salt and pepper, and the green part of the scallion. So before we go into the cooking, I'm gonna explain you the different types of tofu. So in Japan, there are primarily two types of tofu. One is silk tofu, or in Japanese called kinugoshi tofu, and the other is called pressed tofu, or in Japanese momen tofu, which means cotton tofu. The ingredients are exactly the same, but the pressed tofu or the momen tofu has a couple more extra steps. For those you may not know, tofu are made from soybeans, soy milk is first made from them, and then those are hardened using so-called nigari, which is a special type of sea salt. If you just mix it up and let it sit, and then you have a silk tofu. These are softer, these are jigglier, that's why they're called silken tofu, because it's so smooth like silk. And then these soft tofu are breaking up in parts and then pressed again. These are made through pressing the silk tofu. So that's why these are called pressed tofu. I often use cotton cloth. It's called momen tofu or cotton tofu. Which tofu you want to use for different types of recipes. It's really a personal preference thing. I personally like silk tofu better because it has this smooth texture and the flavor is finer. But my father, for example, prefers this pressed tofu. Probably because it has more strong flavor. Because pressed tofu is nothing other than these silk tofu condensed. Today I'm going to show you four recipes. Two probably better to use silk tofu and the other two better to use pressed tofu. But whatever you can find or whatever you prefer is just fine. And if you can buy really authentic tofu, sometimes they're sold just floating in water. Those are probably better quality. But if you have a tofu looking like this or like in a package like this, I would not call them tofu. For me, these are not tofu. They're quite very hard. Authentic tofu should be floating in water just like this. So try to find good tofu in your region. And so if you like tofu and if you have a chance to go to Japan, and look, go to a local supermarket and find really quality tofu there. So then let's prepare these tofu. So these tofu are floating in water like this, so we're gonna get rid of this water first. And then we're going to take it out. For today's recipe, I'm not gonna use the whole thing. Probably just need half of this. And the other half. Cut into half like this. Today for hiyayako, I'm gonna use this fourth block. And for shiai, I'm gonna use the other fourth. So if you have a little bit of leftover tofu like this, you don't want to save it just in a package like this. Because tofu goes bad pretty easily coming in contact with air. So what you want to do is you want to put it in some kind of container like this, and then you want to fill it with water. 
the whole surface should be always soaked in water like this. And then store it like this in the fridge for two to three days and no more because tofu doesn't hold that long once it's open. So you definitely want to use this in the next couple days. And then also with the pressed tofu, if you hold them, you'll see that these are more dense than these silk tofu. So with this, I'm going to cut in half. I'm going to cut into fourths like this. And once you cut them, you'll feel that it's much more firm and but still quite jiggly like this. So for today's recipe of agedashi tofu and uh, tofu champuru, I'm gonna need to kind of get rid of the liquid as much as possible. Then I'm gonna use a small hand towel like this. And then put the tofu over like this. And cover it like this. And you wanna leave it like this for half an hour or so and let it kind of a little bit dry out. So when you cook them, it won't be too watery. Then we're gonna leave it to the side like this. And now we're gonna prepare the rest of the ingredients. So first the green onion, the top part I'm going to use it for the champuru, just like this. And then the rest I'm going to cut into small pieces for the condiments. Next we're going to prepare the shimeji. Well there's not really a preparation, so I'm not going to eat the whole thing today. Just like a third or so. I'm going to cut off the bottom part and throw it away. I'm gonna prepare the carrot. So today I'm gonna to use half for the shirai and half for the champuru. So for shirai I'm gonna cut the carrot to so-called tanzaku giri. Tanzaku are small strips of paper uh, where people used to write poems or haiku. And so to do that I'm gonna cut in half and then also cut in half like this. And then just kind of cut into strips. And the top part also for tanzakuri, but a little bit bigger. Then as the last thing, we're gonna grate the ginger. So I'm not gonna eat the whole thing. I'm probably just gonna eat also half of this and just peel off the skin. And using a grater, we're gonna grate this. So that's that. Now we're finished preparing the old ingredients. Let's cook. So for hiyayako, this is pretty much finished. I just need to put the condiments on it. A little bit of ginger and a little scallion over it. And then I just need to pour soy sauce over it when I eat them. Then this is done for that. Then let's make the tofu sauce for the shirai. For this recipe, it's better to use a silk tofu, but of course you can make this with pressed tofu. But the texture will be just not as smooth with the silk tofu. So as the first thing, I'm gonna break up the tofu just with your hand like this. Then using a strainer like this, I'm gonna make a paste out of this. So just press through this strainer. Then this one teaspoon of sugar. Then one teaspoon of soy sauce. Then two teaspoons of tahini. When you're using a tahini, make sure you mix them well before. And then you mix this up. So once this is mixed well, this is finished for the sauce. This may not look very pretty, but I'll guarantee you the taste. Don't worry. Then now let's boil the vegetable for the shirai. So first I'm gonna boil the carrots because it's gonna take a little bit longer. And then we're gonna wait like 30 seconds or so. And then right after I'm gonna put in the shimeji mushroom, or whatever mushroom you have. Then we're gonna wait for about a minute or so until this comes to boil again. And then once this comes to a boil, I'm gonna put in the spinach. This doesn't need to be cooked that long. And spinach, you definitely don't wanna cook it too long. So just like this. And this is finished, turn the heat off. And then we're going to drain this. If you keep it like this, this is gonna be overcooked. So I'm gonna to try to put it on top of plate or whatever. And then we're gonna separate it apart and leave it like this and let it cool. Then once it's cooled down, I'm gonna mix it with the tofu sauce. If you just mix it like this, it'll be a bit too watery. I'm gonna try to squeeze out the water as much as possible, especially the spinach, but also with the shimeji. Then we'll just need to mix these two together. 
Then once it's got mixed, this is finished. Let's put it on a plate. Then this is finished for the shirahai. Now let's make two yu for the agedashi dofu. If you have a mint yu like this, of course you can use that. But today I'm gonna make it with scratch. Well, not really, I'm gonna be using this dashi powder. But preferably, it'll be better if you make your own dashi, which you can watch in the other video how to make this. Then in a small pot, I'm gonna put in four teaspoons of water, half teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of soy sauce, then half package of dashi powder, which is about 2.5 gram. Then I'm going to turn the heat to medium and break this to boil. Then once this comes to a boil, this is finished. I'm going to turn the heat off. And then put this to the side and let it cool off. And then this is finished. Now let's make the tofu champuru. So this has been sitting for half an hour or so. The tofu has been a little bit dried up a little bit. For this recipe, I'm going to use half of this. Then with these, I'm going to make the champuru. So with the egg, I'm going to beat it first. Just very lightly. Then let's cook this. So using a frying pan, then I'm going to turn the heat to medium and heat this up. And once it's been heated, I'm going to put in some frying oil, just about one or two teaspoon. And here I'm going to first put in the tofu. And here you can just kind of break it up like this, however you want it. I'm gonna first fry that tofu. I'm gonna kind of flip it around. And once the tofu has been fried a little bit, I'm gonna put in the carrots. And then once also the carrot has been a little bit cooked, I'm gonna put in the bean sprouts. And last we're doing part of the scallion. Then we're gonna put in here a bit of salt, just about a pinch. About four teaspoons or so. And also a little bit of black pepper. Then I'm gonna put the eggs. So I'm gonna make a little space like here and then put it here. And then all mix it together. And at the very end, I'm gonna put in a little bit of soy sauce. Just about a teaspoon or so. Oh, this roasted flavor of soy sauce is so good. Okay, this is finished. I'm gonna put it in a plate. Then this is finished for the tofu champuru. So as the last thing, we're gonna make the agedashi dofu. So we're gonna use the rest of the tofu, and we're gonna coat this with the starch. Today I have a tapioca starch, but whatever starch you have is fine. And then I'm just gonna coat this both sides, all around with the starch. Okay, then this is finished. Now we're going to fry this. So in a pot, I'm going to put in some frying oil. Then we're going to turn the heat to medium and bring this to about 160 degrees or so. So it has reached about 170 degrees. Then we're going to fry this. So turn it around every now and then. So once it's got a little bit crusty like this on the surface, then this is finished. You don't really need to cook it that much because tofu are cooked already. So then these are finished and we're going to put it on a plate. Then we're going to put in some scallion. Then we're going to put in the tsuyu sauce. Then this is also finished for that. Then this is all finished. Let's eat. Oh, they all look so great. Now let's eat. Itadakimasu! Okay, let's start with the agedashi dofu while it's still warm. Itadakimasu! Mmm, this coating is partially crunchy, partially soft and gooey. Really, really good. Matches this sauce so good. And then this champuru, like nice. Mm, mm, mm. This combination of flavors is so good. 
Mm. And then the shirai. Mm. This combination of the tofu and the sesame paste is just so really great. Mm. And the hiyayako is not complete unless you put in the soy sauce. Just like that. Itadakimasu. Mm. A little bit of soy sauce and the spiciness of the ginger just actually brings out the sweetness of the tofu. It's just really great. By the way, this agedashi tofu is also really great with some chili on them. So I'm gonna put some chili. Itadakimasu. Mm. Oh, so good. So delicious. Oh, that was so delicious. So as you saw, making these tofu dishes are not very difficult at all. Each of them takes no more than like 20 minutes or so. Especially hiyako, takes no more than 5 minutes to make. But for that, you need a quality tofu. So I should just start looking for quality tofu. And for the hiyako, this is more of a summer dish. So there's also a very similar variation of this for when it's cold in winter, which is called yudofu, meaning warm water with tofu. Where you have instead of cold tofu, where you warm up the tofu with water and pot, just like this. And with hiyayako or yudofu, you can put different kind of vegetable on them. You can put them natto, you can put kimchi on them. You can be creative what you put on top of it. So I hope this video gave you some new ideas for your cooking, especially for the vegetarians out there. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, I'd love it if you get the like button for me so this video can be spread to more people. And if you're interested in seeing more of these videos, please subscribe. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.